Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. Today I'm going to present to you the all new 2022 Airstream Base Camp 16X. This is a rugged adventure trailer built for you. Today I'm going to give you a walkthrough tour of all the features inside now. So join us. The trailer is 16 feet, 2 inches long, has an exterior width of 7 feet, and exterior height with the air conditioning is 9 feet tall. The interior headroom is 6 foot 3 and a half inches. The gross vehicle weight rating of this trailer is 3,500 pounds, and the unit base weight is only 2,700 pounds. That's before options. The hitch weight with propane and batteries is 450 pounds, and it gives you a net carrying capacity of up to 800 pounds. The fresh water tank is 21 gallons and it has a combination gray and black tank of 24 gallons total. Equipped with the air conditioning has a 9200 BTU capacity and has a ducted furnace of 14,300 BTUs. Straight away we're going to start with the pricing. This trailer has a base MSRP of $42,128 and has several factory options. There's an optional microwave of $250, has an optional air conditioning which is $1,200, an optional solar charging system is 180 watts of solar panels on the roof and will come with AGM, absorbed glass mat batteries, which are 80 amp hours apiece. That is a $2,400 option. The popular Base Camp X option is $2,700, and that gives you the larger rims and tires, the axle lift, the heavy duty stone protection on the front, and the rock guards over to glass. The National Destination Charge is $2,500, giving you a total MSRP of $51,178. Now, this particular trailer has some additional upgrades. The customer that bought this trailer upgraded from the Fantastic Fan to Max Air Fan. That is remote control and gives you a higher capacity of air discharge and intake. They also upgraded with two battleborne lithium iron phosphate batteries with heat that gives you a total of 100 amp hours per battery, which are all usable. The difference between that and an AGM battery, an AGM battery the same size and footprint is 80 amp hours, but you could only discharge it to 50%. So you only have 40 amp hours usable per battery. With the lithium iron phosphate batteries, you could use all 100, so it gives you 200 amp hours. That'll let you run off the grid for a much longer time. Now let's dive into all the details. This trailer is fully insulated all the way around, has an enclosed underbelly and insulation below the floor here. On the entry door, it has a privacy shade and it's a tinted window. And if you look at the back of the door here, it has a catch built in. That locks this door in place if it's a windy day, keeps it from moving around. Also, you have a double lock system, so you have a top lock, and this one is your deadbolt lock. And it still has that beautiful signature Airstream bank vault shut that we all love. There's also an insect screen here, it's a roll away screen on the entry door. It gives you full, complete coverage all the way across. And it's all hand riveted, buck riveted, just like the Airstream traditional travel trailers. On the entrance door exit here, there's some grip tape so you don't slip on your way out. You get two sets of keys with the trailer. The entry step just tucks right away when you're done using it. It just pops right in. This has the Goodyear Wrangler off-road tires and a lot of ground clearance and wheel clearance around because it has a lift as part of the Base Camp X upgrade. It's always important to check your lug nut torque before every single trip, as well as your tire pressure. That information is posted on your VIN plate on the outside of the trailer, as well as in your owner's manual. Also, if you go to support.airstream.com, there's lots of useful information there. There's also several QR codes you could scan with your cell phone built into this trailer that'll bring you to the support pages. There's a grab handle at the entry door. Porch light over the door. This window pops out, has screens. We'll see that when we get inside. Outside, GFCI protected electrical outlet. You plug in your devices outside. This will not run off the battery system. You will have to be plugged into shore power to operate this electrical outlet unless you do get an aftermarket inverter system. 
Down below here, we got some bumper guards for your departure angle, and it has heavy duty stabilizer jacks that stabilize the trailer and keep the bounce out of your walk when you're walking around inside. And this is not a leveling device. You don't level yourself using stabilizer jacks. You level yourself using your manual hitch jack up front and leveling blocks underneath the tires. If you look down here, you can see the tank chamber. This is an insulated tank chamber, which is heated. So when you have your furnace system on, that will heat the tank, gives you a higher threat protection if you're doing some cold weather camping. Marker light over here, beautiful cast aluminum LED taillight housings. One of the upgrades I forgot to tell you about, this is a backup camera. It's a wireless backup or driving camera. It comes with a monitor. This customer decided to do this upgrade. It's just under $1,000, but it gives you a little bit of peace of mind when you're driving on the highway. You can see who's behind you. You can see when you pass a vehicle. And I highly recommend that we do that here aftermarket in our service department. It is a standard feature in all Bambi Caravel all the way up models, but a dealer install option on the base camp. Rear entry door is also lockable. Swings all the way around. There's little pockets here built into door for all your gear. A roll up privacy shade that snaps in place. Give you plenty of privacy. Also has a roll down insect screen. Roll that down, snap it all in place and it goes all the way to the floor and that will keep the bugs out of your trailer. Fully gasketed, double gasket system. Keeps the wind out as well as rain. Has a gutter rail over the top. And if you look at this piece here, this is a Keter rail, all right, there's a little black insert that you can remove, and that's a half inch Keter rail, and you can do all sorts of awning accessories that you could buy after the market. My favorite is the Moonshade, if you check them out online. They have an accessory that will slide into that Keter rail, and you'll have a little awning, so when you set up a camp, it'll keep the sun sh uh, shading your area. Over here is the spare tire, full-size spare tire on the base camp. Tucks right up into this well, and there's a tool, a crank, that you could crank this down to the ground, just like on most SUVs that still have spare tires. Great to have, great to know where it is, too. Close this, we have your license plate bracket with lights, cast aluminum hinges here on the door, and there's another catch here. So when you have this door open all the way out, you can lock it in place. Let me show you that, it's kind of cool. Lock that right in place, and that will keep this door from blowing around on a windy day. And also, when you're ready to depart, it snaps in place, out of your way. This has the Truma heating system. It's a 9200 BTU furnace. This also takes care of your domestic hot water. It gives you about three gallons of hot water, super hot water. I have the Truma system in my 1961 Airstream Bambi, and it's unbelievable. I do love that. Equipped with the smart plug here, so, this is the power cord that comes with the trailer. When you want to disconnect, you just pull these little clips out and plug it in. That's how simple. A lot simpler design and better contact than the Marine Co twist lock that no one seems to get twisted properly and you have a lot of resistance there which causes power cords to melt. So the smart plug is safer. Snap it right in. Maybe you look down here, it is about 20 feet. Plugs into a 30 amp Camp Crown electrical outlet. Colonial Airstream does give you a 30 amp to 15 or 20 amp household electrical outlet that you can plug the trailer in to charge it when you get home. We do sell a lot aftermarket, the soft star capacitors for the air conditioning. That will allow the air conditioning to start up at a lower amps. So you can potentially run just the air conditioning off of a 20 amp household electrical outlet. If you don't have the soft starter, you won't be able to run the air conditioning and you would have to plug into a 30 amp at a campground. We, there's also adapters you could buy aftermarket to go from 30 up to 50 because we have 50 in our delivery bay here at our dealership. This is just a terminator outlet that terminates one leg of the power to give you 30 amp. This is single stage, this is two. Over here, we have the city water connection. So when you go to a campsite and you want to hook up to their water pressure, Colonial Airstream gives you a fresh water drinking hose. You hook it up to the campgrounds connection. You spin this and lock it in place. This has a water pressure regulator built into it that protects the water system in your trailer from unexpected high spikes of high water pressure at the campground. Now this does not fill your fresh water tank. This supplies water to all your faucets on board. Now, to fill your fresh water tank, 
has a lockable door here. Take this little cap off, stick the fresh water drinking hose loose into that hole, turn the water on low, allow the tank to fill. If you overflow the tank, there are real reliefs a little bit here, but you don't want to get it to that point. This is just an air vent. It's not supposed to be spewing water out. You could check there's a gauge inside your trailer will tell you how much fresh water and percentage you have so you know when to stop. When you're done, you put the cap on, lock it, protect your water tank from contamination. If someone wanted to open it up and put gasoline in it, maybe they thought it was a gas tank. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've seen it happen before. Down below, we have a gravity drain for the fresh water tank here, and we have two low point drains for water lines, hot and cold, for winterization, or just to drain the system down when you're done using the trailer. Over here, in the wheel well, there's a little tube. The air conditioning has a drip pan underneath it that prevents the water from rolling down the roof and leaving all those weird streaks up and down the side of the trailer. That's something unique that Airstream does that I don't see a lot of other manufacturers do. That's some attention to detail. Over here we have an outside utility shower with hot and cold water. Check this out. Open the little door, shower wand. This is the same shower you're going to use inside the trailer. Hangs up on a wand. Well, you could pass it through to the outside. You reach right in. You could reach the hot and cold water. It's a clever idea for a small space to utilize the same shower that you use inside and outside. I see a lot of this in like the van life. People that build their own camper vans. They love to use a kitchen faucet or another faucet in the trailer for dual purpose. Airstream does it too. Put that in. When you get inside the trailer, you can hang it back up on its wand. Down below here, we have the VIN plate with tire pressure recommendations here, weights, everything you need to know. And then over here, there's a compartment. This is uh, rolled aluminum, and this whole compartment goes all the way back here, here. There's a light over here to illuminate this dump station. And then it brings us to some accessories that Colonial Airstream gives our great customers here. So let me explain what's going on over here. This is a discharge. There's a combination 21 gallon gray black tank in this trailer. And we give you a waste hose. We'll just take it out of its storage tube because why would you want to store this with everything else that you have, right? Why not have a waste hose and a separate storage tube? We're gonna take this out. And what you do is you take the little cap off here. You don't pull this handle first because then you would have a surprise waiting for you when you take the cap off. But you take the little cap off, and we sell some cool accessories here. A little handle on the end of this makes it a little bit easier. You can check that out in our parts department. But you snap this on. You would have rubber gloves on if the trailer was used already. And then you stretch this out all the way over to your dump station at the campground. You can see how long these things get. And then you put on your elbow. All right, and we get it lined up with the grooves and twist it, make sure it's secure. And then uh, there's little thread adapters here. I guarantee you after camping for 20 years, campground threads are stripped, so we give you a rubber donut. So what you do with this, when you pull it out of its package, it's just a rubber donut, right? This slips over here and then you wedge that into the campground's dump station. It gives you a solid, secure connection because the last thing you want to do is pull that handle and have a big rush of water and waste come out and this not be secure and get loose. Now you got a big mess and it's embarrassing when it happens to the campground. It's happened to me too. So when you're done emptying the waste, so what you do is pull this handle, the waste discharges through. And you could get different grading systems to have it graded properly into the tank, or you could just do it by hand and if you're not completely level and get all the waste through. Uh, you close it and then wait for all the waste to discharge through. Now you can flush the toilet a few more times inside to get some more fresh water through. But when you're all done, you take the cap off of this end first, get any residual waste to drip into your hose and you shake it down and you get it down into the dump station. Take your little fitting off. I'd get a big zipper lock type bag, throw both of these in it, put it in this compartment here, a box of rubber gloves. And then you put your waste hose back in the storage tube. You put your little cap on and uh, you know, sometimes these caps don't go on right and they come off when you're driving. I see waste hoses all over the, the highways. Uh, put a carabiner on the end of it, and that'll keep it and prevent it from twisting when you're driving on the highway. 
And then just make sure your cap is secure before you drive down the highway as well. And just make sure any lights you have on are off as well. Now, around the front of the trailer, we have heavy duty stainless steel wrap protectors or rock guards. These are a part of the Base Camp X package, but if you do have a Base Camp that's a non X, you could add these aftermarket through our service department. Now, leaves and debris might get stuck behind here, or maybe you want to wax the trailer clean behind here. Take the little nuts off. This panel hinges out. It's not a hinge. Airstream, attention to detail. That's what I love about Airstream. You can hinge these out and clean behind them and secure them and put them back up when you're done. Now, what this does is the body's all aluminum, all right? And this body is aluminum curved. It's not stretched like your traditional Airstream travel trailer. And that's one thing I really love about the base camp. It is more resilient for that adventure buyer. If you look at the design of it, it's just curved aluminum, straight aluminum, a little curve. It's got that key to rail on the top. If you're driving and you encounter some trees or brush and you brush up against things, this is not gonna dent as easy as a stretch form panel. The rock guard protects these panels from like heavy debris kicking up when you're driving down the highway. Say you're driving down the highway and you hit a road alligator. Maybe that's what we call a retread that fell off a truck. That's gonna kick up and potentially hit the trailer. It should hit this rock guard first and there's a gap that has some deflection that will protect your body behind. And then if you do dent these up, these are easier to bang out than the aluminum or you could just replace it as a part. The most important rock guard are these solar stone guards that are over the glass here. If you kick up a big enough rock, you could shatter these tamper glass windows that are behind here. So the X package includes these solar stone guards, protector glass, and it, it gives you a little bit more shade on the inside. These are also removable with some screws here and they hinge out and you can clean your glass because the glass is gonna get dirty. You wanna be able to see through and see all that beautiful scenery that there is at the campground. Well, you could maintain your trailer and clean these as well. Over here is an external solar port. So if you have a portable solar panel, you could plug that in and it will charge your batteries. I do recommend getting an additional Victron MPPT solar charge controller just for your external solar panel. There is a Victron MPPT solar charge controller on board, but it's best practice to have two separate ones, one for the solar that's on the roof and one for your external solar. Over here is a little trunk compartment, all right? And in here is that power cord adapter I talked about. There's your 30 amp and your 15 or 20 amp end. This is the tool to crank down your stabilizer jacks. You just get a cordless drill with a three quarter inch socket on it. It does the same thing. Here's the fresh water hose in here. And remember I mentioned that QR code? Well, here's one here. You can just scan that and that'll bring you to support.airstream.com, give you all the useful information. Airstream does a great job supporting their customers, give them a lot of awesome information. It's the same support they gave their dealers so we could better serve you. Now, this lifts off and there's some hidden stuff underneath here. Now Colonial Airstream fills these propane tanks for you. That's part of our normal prep. We also give you a lot of the items that you saw in the RV starter kit. We give you a complete customer orientation at our dealership. We'll have a delivery coordinator spend a good amount of time with you to teach you how everything works inside and out of your trailer, give you some tips, some suggestions. And then when you're done with your orientation, if you get a hitch set up through our service department, we'll demonstrate and set that up for you as well. And then you have the option to spend the night at our beautiful facility and test some of the systems before you depart and hit the road the following morning. These tanks are 20 pound bottles, all right? And they're five pounds of propane each, but the cylinders all together, this weighs about 42 pounds each. There's a regulator that you could switch from left, left to right bottle. And there's a gauge here that's red right now that show you that this bottle is off or empty. There's no gauge that uh, will tell you if we're empty or full uh, in increments of quarter, half, three quarter, but you'll know if you're empty or full. If you turn both on and you have one selected to one bottle, if one bottle does empty, it will automatically internally switch to your second bottle for you so you don't run out of heat. 
We do sell the gas top as an aftermarket accessory at our dealership. I highly recommend looking into that. It's a very safe device that you can add to your trailer to enhance your customer experience. And it's best practice to make sure your propane tanks are shut off before you hit the highway. There's no need to have anything on when you're driving on the highway. There's no temptation anymore because the refrigerators no longer run on propane. They're compressor 12 volt style refrigerators that will run off your solar, your battery, and your 12 volt charge lead that your tow vehicle have. Talking about tow vehicles, this is a 3500 gross vehicle weight rating trailer and an over 400 pound hitch weight. So you're gonna make sure your vehicle has a maximum towing capacity of 3500 pounds or more and could also handle the hitch weight as well as the additional payload. When we talk about payload, every vehicle has a gross vehicle weight rating your tow vehicle and a curb weight. The difference between the two, depending on what factory options you have, is your net carrying capacity or your cargo carrying capacity. That you factor in your passengers, your luggage, your cargo, and your accessories, and the hitch weight of the trailer. When you add all those things up, you cannot exceed your vehicle's cargo carrying capacity. This is a very important thing to look at. So the three things you look at when you buy a tow vehicle is one, towing capacity, two, hitch weight capacity, three, and cargo, cargo carrying capacity. Those three things will tell you if your vehicle is capable of towing the trailer safely. Your vehicle is also going to need to have a seven-way wiring harness. This is a seven-way wiring harness. There's six spades and a pin. Plugs into the back of the vehicle. We recommend having a charge lead for your vehicle so your alternator or battery could charge the trailer's battery when you're driving on the highway. You're also going to need electric brake controller. There's wireless, Bluetooth, and hardwired brake controllers that we sell here in our service department. You want to make sure your vehicle is compatible with having a brake controller installed. When we hook up the brake controller, we also hook up this trailer breakaway cable that goes into your back of your vehicle, permanently mounted to the frame or hitch receiver of your vehicle. In case the trailer ever came detached from the vehicle, this would pull out. It's something you're never gonna wanna do if you're parking the trailer and use it as an emergency brake. Never do that. This is just for the emergency situation where the trailer came detached. It pulled this plunger out and locks up the brakes on the trailer so the trailer doesn't continue rolling down the highway. If you pull this out and it's not an emergency and you leave it out, it will rapidly drain those batteries down, burn out the magnets in your brakes, and now you have a very expensive repair bill to take care of. The frame is coated with a highly protective paint that is textured. This is a two and five sixteenth inch ball. You got 11,000 pound safety chains that you're gonna hook up to the tow vehicle. And Colonial Airstream gives you a Demco coupler compatible hitch lock. And this slides through and prevents that from lifting up. Therefore, no one can get their two and five sixteenth inch ball. There are aftermarket hitch locks that you could buy that are more enhanced that cover this whole area. My favorite is the Altoro lock. You can check them out online. But that will prevent anything from getting underneath this particular area of the trailer. This, if I locked it properly, would prevent this from coming up, which prevents stuff from getting underneath the, the ball to take the trailer. Over here, there's a propane line. Now this is for a low pressure compatible barbecue grill. If you have a high pressure compatible barbecue, just hook it up to one of the tanks, take them out, use your barbecue that way. But if you have low pressure compatible, take this, this, slide this back, lock it in, turn on the gas. You would already have this hooked up to your grill. And they do it only like this low, so you don't try to run stuff into the trailer. You know, you get safety, it's all safety. But they do sell aftermarket. There are companies that sell longer hoses. Just uh, I wouldn't recommend bringing it inside the trailer and hooking up one of those portable heating systems. Uh, that could be very dangerous. Now that we finished the exterior tour, I'm going to take you inside and go over some of the awesome details. Let's go. Come on in. I want to show you the lay of the land so you kind of understand where everything is in this trailer before we dive into the details. Front galley kitchen. Look at that beautiful panoramic window all the way around. 3.1 cubic foot refrigerator. Back here, we have the bench seating area. There's some dinette tables that assemble in the middle. And then you could just remove the cushions and they make it to 24 by 76 inch twin beds or combined it makes into a 76 by 76 inch, almost a king bed. Behind me is the wet bath and it's got a toilet and shower and everything you need. 
Now that you kind of know the lay of the land, now I'm gonna really dive into some of the details so you can understand this trailer a little bit better. We'll start right here with the bathroom. Mirror on the door. You can lock this door when you're in the bathroom and secure it. When the door's closed, it's secured against this aluminum rail. And then there's a privacy curtain that slides across and it Velcros in and it goes way past the door. And it really prevents all that water from splashing up against the door, prevents water from getting in the aisle. However, I do recommend putting some type of towel down so when you open up the door and get out, you don't have any water that rolls underneath this beautiful vinyl flooring, very durable vinyl flooring they put in this trailer. And it's on top of a plywood floor with marine anti-waking substance painted to the whole perimeter. So it's very durable, very robust, but always prevent it from potentially getting wet if you could prevent water from dripping on the floor when you get out of the shower. The bottom here of the shower is a, a cast uh, product. It's uh, fiberglass or plastic. And there's your shower faucet, hot and cold. There's a little soap dish here. Your toilet paper goes in here and prevents it from getting wet. That's the pass through for the outside shower. Up here on the wall is the shower wand holder. There's a clothesline that pulls all the way across and locks in place. So you can hang light items. There's a towel bar here, LED light with switch on the outside, a bathroom fan. You just push this up and that exhausts all that steam or stale air right out of the bathroom. One of the things I really like, I want one for my Airstream, is this little pouch here. You can put shampoo, conditioner, your shaver, razor, whatever in there. There's some hooks on the wall here that you utilize for things too. And a Dometic porcelain toilet with a foot pedestal for flush. So when you're ready to use the toilet, there's only be about this much water in there. So you can add water just by putting your foot on the pedal and then fill the bowl up to whatever height you want. When you're done, flush it. The bowl valve opens, drains all the water out. And you always want to make sure when you're traveling on the highway that there's no water in the bowl that's going to be splashing all around when you're driving. Down here is a drain plug for the shower. It's right in the center and that goes directly into combination gray black tank which is 24 gallons total. Top of the door even has a gap so if you're taking a really hot steamy shower and that exhaust is coming out you have some air that will flow in. You could also use the second fan which would normally be a fantastic fan with a manual lift. Uh, this customer did upgrade to the Max Air which is in and out, a variable speeds, temperature setting, remote control. You can lay in bed and control your fan. You can also manually operate it as well. Moving to the gallery, let's get back to this 3.1 cubic foot Nova Cool refrigerator. Why do I love it so much? I have two. I have one in each one of my Airstream trailers, and they're very efficient. They use very low amperage of my battery system. There's a freezer compartment inside, and the dial here off to the left that you can control from zero to seven. I keep mine on three. That's about all you need to keep your food safe in there. If you put it all the way up to seven, it just runs it consistent. Well, actually freeze things in the, free, in the refrigerator, which I don't think is necessary. There's an area here for spices that you can put up. This has the optional microwave. It's a small 0.08 cubic foot or 0.07 cubic foot. This is plugged into electrical outlet. In order to use that electrical outlet, you'll have to be plugged into the campground or some portable generator. More storage down below. We give some deodorizer for the tank, electrical outlet tester, and some RV safe, septic tank safe toilet paper. This goes pretty far back. There's some boot storage here off to the side. Fire extinguisher, little rack. You can store a lot of cool things in here. Every time a customer comes to the service, I check out the airstream because I, I love airstreams. I like to see where they put things and how they store and utilize the areas of their trailer. Now, look at all this counter space all the way around. I see some full timers out there using these base camps and they prep like full meals in here and it's amazing how much space they have and they love it. But look, when you're cooking here, you got the whole view of everything. All these cool places you're gonna go, you got it right out your kitchen. When you don't want that view, or you want some privacy, look at this all weather material here with zippers on the side. And you just zip these things up and you'd be surprised how much heat it holds back from getting in the trailer. And it even adds an extra layer of insulation if you're cold weather camping. You could even do some you know, flex foil insulation between those if you're doing some colder weather to prevent some of that heat loss that you get. Um, 
rack here and this is the red rock interior decor so there's three different interior decors you could do forest ridge glacier lake and red rock each one of them has a different color accent and different color accent on the stitching as well as if you do it the glacier lake it has a little bit different color of laminate uh, all of them are beautiful the most popular happens to be the red rock and then the Glacier Lake and the Forest Ridge. Um, I like the Forest Ridge myself, I like the green. There's an electrical outlet here that pops down, so when you're not using it, you'll need it in your way. You got electric here that, that uh, you would need to be plugged into shore power to use. You got USB that you need to be plugged into shore power to use, or you can have our service department add an inverter on board. This is the vent for the refrigerator compartment, a two burner cooktop, so you just select which burner and you ignite it. Select which burner, ignite it. And it's always best practice have a window open and a fan on when you're using any cooking surface in an RV. Over here, we have another stacked electrical outlet with USB, a sink with cover. Look how deep that is. Very useful space. Uh, some people use these as cutting boards. I probably wouldn't. I like to preserve it. Hot and cold water in the faucet, another rack, some hooks, another area here to stuff some bulk items into. These can hold quite a bit of weight, so you can really stuff some a lot of items in there. Down here is the storage area, and there's a little cutout here for your silverware and uh, storage compartment here. This is where the batteries are stored. So this floor comes up and the batteries are in a well below the floor. Because this customer upgraded to the Battleborn batteries, they have the optional heat built into them. So you can turn on the battery heater and there's a heat blanket inside each one of the batteries that will thermostatically come on if the battery's below the threshold of temperature, which it wouldn't be safe to charge. The batteries are safe to use at that temperature, but they're not safe to charge at that temperature. So they will not accept the charge until they reach a proper temperature. So you just flip the switch on, and allow the batteries to heat up to properly take on your charge. Whether you're using solar, 12 volt charge lead from your vehicle, or if you're plugged into shore power at a campground. To turn the battery system off, there's an on off switch here, just a regular marine switch. Carbon dioxide NLP leak detector right here. That's hardwired to the battery system. And then you also have a tank heater. So underneath the trailer where the tank is and the, the heated chamber, there's a pad on the bottom of the tank that you flip this switch, it's thermostatically controlled. Once it gets below the threshold, we'll heat that tank up to prevent it from freezing. That's for unexpected drops in temperatures, not like a four season, I'm gonna camp when it's five degrees outside with water on board, but you're camping and at night it gets below freezing for a short period of time, you flip that switch on, that'll protect your tank from freezing. I have seen customers go in further extremes, but they've done some other things to their trailers to get there. Now, over here, there's some hooks here you can hang some keys from, there's some storage compartments here, and another one here and a furnace duct here. This is the wireless backup camera the customer opted to get and this is the remote control that the customer will decide where they want to put for the max air fan on the roof. That's a really nice upgrade they did. Extruder aluminum protection here on the corner so instead of like two pieces of wood button together, if you're loading cargo in and out, look at that cargo door in the back. You can load bikes in here. Well, these areas are prone to be chipped, so they put the extruded aluminum all these corners here to really protect it. This is a lockable compartment here, all right, and then inside here, you could put your cell phone, you could charge your GoPro or some of your other devices, a pouch here, there's some USB here. Uh, there's even a way to run wires out of this compartment through this hole, so they really thought it out. There's even a cup holder here, which is kind of cool. And uh, you can just lock that up if you leave for the day. It will hopefully prevent some theft. Over here on the wall, right at the entry door, there's a grab handle. There's another QR code you can scan to, to get to support.airstream.com. You have your Truma control here. So you can control the heat on board, your hot water, what source you're gonna use, whether it's propane, electric, and the fan speed. So once you get into one of these items, you just press it. Right now the heat's off, well it's summer, it's really hot out, right? So the heat's not on. But you could crank this all the way up, and if you get above the threshold of temperature, we'll kick that trumer heater on. Um, you also, and then you could see, you know, on the heat, uh, we're on uh, propane, but uh, you, you could switch the source 
and you could switch it to a mixture between propane and electric, two electric elements, which uses a lot of amps, or uh, just electric, one element or two elements. And then you could also, you know, change the fan speed on high uh, eco. That's what I use on my Airstream trailer. So during the orientation, we'll give you a complete walkthrough on the operation of the heating system as well as the hot water and uh, leads us to the air conditioning, which is up here. It is a 9200 B2 air conditioning with electric heat strip. Uh, you just pick you know, what speed you want your fan on and if you want it on cool or just a vent and then you just spin this little dial over from hot to cool to set your desired temperature. It's not digitally controlled, it's all analog switches. Most important with these air conditioning, we get a lot of people that come in for service, my air conditioning froze up, I'm not sure what's going on. It was working, then overnight, you know, nothing, and the water was dripping out of it. What happens is these filters get clogged. They get clogged pretty quickly. Think about the amount of lint that comes off your clothes and your towels, you know, that's where it goes, right into these filters. So you can just have to pop these down, clean them off in the sink, let them dry, snap them back up. That gives you proper airflow so your air conditioning doesn't freeze. Up on the roof here, we got a smoke detector. And make sure you check your nine volt batteries there. Back over here, this little dial here, this little circle is just a sen sensor for the temperature sensor for your Truma heating system. And then we have your sea level two tank monitor. And look at another QR code just for this one item. It'll tell you your battery voltage, your fresh water capacity, which is 21 gallons, and your black gray tank, which is 24 gallons. Right now we're at 0%. This trailer's empty, right? We pulled the handle, nothing, nothing came out. You can also turn on your water pump from here. So it's a demand pump. So if you have your fresh water tank, some water on board, turn on the pump, that will pump the system up to pressure and then shut off. Once it feels a drop in pressure, when you turn on a faucet, the pump will automatically kick on, giving you water pressure. Best practice to have that shut off when you're towing down the highway. Over here next to the bed, there's a GFCI protected electrical outlet, and because this has the optional solar charging system, has the Victron solar display. I do recommend, if you are very techy like I am, and you love the, the numbers, to get the smart dongle for the Victron MPPT solar charge controller. That way you can check Bluetooth on your phone and see how your batteries are operating, rather than coming over to the display here that comes standard with the solar charging system. For the window, you just unsnap here and you pull on the handle and that pops this window out. Gives you plenty of ventilation. It has an insect screen built in and it also has the same zip up blinds that we did in the front. Another storage compartment here. And check this little detail out. Right over the entry door, there's a bumper, right? Because if you don't duck or if you get the duck on your way out, you're not gonna slam your head there. Those are the details I love about Airstream. They thought about everything. They've been doing this for over 90 years and they always improve their product year after year after year. And they take a lot of customer feedback. A lot of the surveys they look through, they go to rallies, they understand what the customer's wants and needs are and some of the struggles they might have and they always develop and improve their products to better cater their customers. So we love Airstream for that. All right, back to the bed area here, large bed, 24, 76, you could do the 76 by 76, or you could even do a half bed, which is 76 by 36. So you have lots of different options. Um, before we dive into that, let's lift up this side. There's two little hatches, one here, one here. But you can lift these up, and it gets you into this bulk storage area. There's your owner's bag with all the owner's manuals that come with the trailer. And we have a series of legs. So we have short leg and long leg. So take these little caps out and we could put in a short leg here, for example, spin that in. Then we could take our little table out. Look, there's even a QR code for this. So if you don't know how to do this, you can scan that and it'll bring up a little info on Airstream's website how to do that. This is a low table, so if you want to use it as like a coffee table height or put your feet on it. And then this leg here is for the taller table. You could do too tall, too short, whatever you want. This pops out, snaps in place, and you can spin them around all different angles. 
Uh, but what's cool now is it gives you a lot of options. So this bed is so flexible. So what you do, take this cushion back, we'll lift this one up. You could flip this over. You could flip this over. All right. And you could have a little bed across here if you wanted to. You could take this table out and put the other lower table and flip these two flaps out and had a bed here this way. You could have a bed here or you could put the whole entire thing down. Now let me show you something else. Take this leg out, just twist it. Up here, there's some boards that zips right into this pouch. These go across the back. And then this cushion goes here, and this one goes here. And now, if you have this table set up, you have another like bench, U-shaped bench. So you can have a whole bunch of friends in here sitting around playing cards. You can have that one out. You know, there's so much flexibility with this one. Now, the next part of the bed, <clears throat> I'm just gonna kneel on here. I gotta get the short leg out. Okay, we're gonna screw this in. Put the short table in here. Now, I just have to fold this flap down. There, same thing. Now we got the massive bed. And it is very durable material they use on here. It's kind of like what they use on like off-road vehicles. But look how big this thing is. Plenty of room to stretch out. I'm five foot nine. I can sleep this way. It tapers as you get to the back or I can sleep on the very edge. But awesome space here. Above that little zip up area, there's another uh, big, big storage area. There's USB charge port here. There's a couple more hooks and another that window that opens all the way up. And then back here, while you're laying in bed, you also have a reading light. It's adjustable. Now I'm gonna put this whole bed away and I'm gonna show you what's underneath. Now you have your benches back. All right, down here is some D-rings. You could tie down your bike, your bicycle. You have the fuse panel with all your 12 volt fuses and AC breakers. The Truma system lives underneath here. There's a USB charge port, another electrical outlet, and another furnace duct. And this tapered floor here in the back. There's a multi-tool Airstream gives you that you could put any half inch drive socket on and the right size socket so you could take your tires off, you could crank down your stabilizer jacks or whatever your tool needs are. And it collapses and tucks in really neat into one of these side pouches. Hope you enjoyed the tour of the all new 2022 Airstream Base Camp 16X here at Colonial Airstream, Millstone Township, New Jersey. You can visit us on our website at colonialairstream.com. Call us at 800-265-9019. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We got a lot of cool things there too. We'll see you soon.